In this video, we're going to be looking at resistors and Ohm's law, and this is the second of four videos. So let's get right into it. Can you remember what resistance is? Well, resistance is a property which all materials slash components have, and it is the opposition that a substance has against electric current. It is measured in ohms and is given the symbol R. So there are some rules that you need to learn about resistance and these rules really differ depending on if you have resistors connected in parallel or resistors connected in series. So resistances in parallel, as more resistors are added, resistance reduces as there are more paths for the current to take. So if you have five resistors and you connect one to a circuit, it's going to be, it's going to have some resistance. Let's say you have um, the resistors are a five. So you've got one resistor with five ohms of resistance in the circuit. Okay. If you add another one to that in parallel, so there's two next to each other, both of five ohm resistance, then what you would find is that the resistance actually comes down. The more resistors which you add in parallel, the lower the total resistance actually is. So, it does sound a little bit counterintuitive that the more resistors you add, the less resistance there is. But the reason that this occurs is because as you add more resistors in parallel, there are more paths for the current to take. So if you've got more paths for that current, then there's less opposition to that current flowing. So if you have resistors and you want to decrease the resistance, put them in parallel. If you have resistances in series, resistors in series, and you add more, then the resistance will go up. Because each of those resistors opposes the current on that path. So if you have many resistors in one path in a row, then the resistances will actually add up. So if you have lots of resistors and you want to increase the resistance, you put them in series and you will this the current will struggle to get through, meaning the resistance has gone up. So there is an equation which you need to learn for resistance in series. Um, and this equation is given here. R total is equal to R1 plus R2 plus however many resistors you have. So if you have two 5 ohm resistors, the total resistance will be 5 plus 5, which is 10. So if those two were connected in series, you would have a 10 ohm resistance. If you have a 5, a 5 and a 2, then the total resistance in series would be 12 ohms. So just to remind you a little bit of what the parallel and series stuff means, well, if you connected two resistors in parallel, it would look like this here. If you connected them in series, it would look like this here. Because remember, a series is where you have more than one thing on one wire, like a series of episodes, you have more than one episode. Well, series, you have more than one thing on the wire. And in parallel, well, this diagram, you can see that these two resistors are actually parallel to each other. So that's a good way of thinking about it. So here's a little example for you. Calculate the total resistance in the circuit below. Well, we can apply the rule that we've learned. R total is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3, because there's three resistors in this case. R total is equal to 2 plus 3 plus 4, because this resistor has 2 ohms. This resistor has three ohms and this resistor has four ohms. So our total is all of those added together, which is nine ohms. So our total, the total resistance, nine, nine ohms. Complete task seven in your electricity workbook if you are following along. So next we're going to look at Ohm's law. Ohm's law is a law stating that electric current is proportional to voltage and inversely proportional to resistance. Ohmic conductors have a directly proportional linear IV graph and look like the graph below. An ohmic conductor is something which obeys Ohm's law. So this graph here shows current plotted against potential difference. As the potential difference increases, the current increases in a linear fashion. Things which follow this sort of rule are known as ohmic conductors. Um, an example of something like this would be a resistor. So a resistor follows Ohm's law. As the potential difference goes up, the current goes up in a directly proportional way. 
IV graphs are graphs which show the relationship between current and voltage in a component. So an IV graph for a resistor, which we've just went over, looks like this. So providing that resistor stays at a constant temperature, the IV graph looks like that. It is a linear, directly proportional graph. You can tell it's directly proportional because the line goes through the origin. You can tell it's linear because the line is straight and it's not curved. So that's a linear, directly proportional relationship between current and potential difference. And that example is for a resistor. For a filament lamp, uh, this is what the IV graph looks like. Current plotted against potential difference, you get this lazy S shape. You get a what looks like a linear relationship near zero potential difference, but as the potential difference increases or decreases further and further away from zero, the current then increases at a much slower rate and you get this lazy S shape. So this is for a filament lamp or a bulb. And again, you need, to, you need to know these, so I would um, make a note of that. The filament bulb or the filament lamp needs a lazy S shape for the IV graph. And finally, you need to know the IV graph for a diode. A diode only allows current to flow in one direction. So it's quite intuitive to think that the current will increase when the potential difference is going one way. So if the potential difference is positive, um, traveling in, in one direction, then the current will increase. Whereas as the potential difference gets closer and closer to zero and then negative going the other way, there is zero current flowing because the, well, the diode does not allow the current to flow the other way. So the IV graph for a diode looks like this. And again, you need to know that. Can you remember bird and turd from our last video? Well, an LDR uses bird. As light intensity increases, resistance decreases. A thermistor uses turd, so as the temperature increases, resistance decreases. So, thermistors can be used in automatic circuits. They can be used to turn heating elements on and off in heating systems, fans on and off in computer systems, depending on the temperature of the surroundings. So this circuit here uh, turns on the coolant fan when the temperature rises. So, here you can see a thermistor, there, in the bottom left. And what happens is when the temperature starts to rise, the resistance goes down because of turd, temperature up, resistance down. So because the resistance is going down, if we think about V equals IR, the resistance is going down, but the current is staying the same because it's in a closed loop. So if the resistance is going down and the current staying the same, V equals IR, the voltage supplied to this thermistor is going to go down, which means this fan is going to get a greater proportion of that voltage, more energy per coulomb. And because it's getting more energy per coulomb, it can spin faster. A fan spinning faster, well, that cools it down more. So essentially what this is doing, this circuit is, it's monitoring the temperature. And if the temperature goes up too much, the fan goes quicker and it cools the system down more efficiently. Um, just to make a quick point here, this circuit symbol here isn't real. That doesn't actually represent a fan. That's just uh, for illustration purposes. LDRs can be used in automatic circuits as well. LDRs can also be used in circuitry. LDRs can be used to automatically switch on and off lights, depending on the light intensity of the environment. So this circuit opens a window door when there is a high light intensity. When there is a highlight intensity, the resistance of the LDR goes down because of bird, brightness up, resistance down, meaning the door gets a higher share of the voltage opening it up. So if the resistance of this light dependent resistor goes down, then it's getting a lower share of that voltage because remember V equals IR. If it's getting a low resistance, the voltage it gets is also going to lower, which means the door gets a higher proportion of that energy. Um, energy per coulomb, the voltage, it gets a higher proportion of the voltage and the door will open. So this, when it gets bright, when it's bright outside, this door opens. It could be on a window, for example, maybe when the, um, the light's out, the, the sun's out rather, a window door may open or it might be, I don't know, but that's one example of what a light dependent resistor could be used for. Complete task number eight in your electricity work. Thank you very much for watching. Workbooks and test papers which integrate with these videos and online courses are available at our website backroadtutoring.com